resolution is as follows. Declaring the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives to be vacant. This is the Uniparty for the American people watching. Gentlemen, you will suspend. of the job of Speaker of the House and has allowed a uniparty, one that fuels foreign wars, tramples on civil liberties, and increases our disastrous national debt to take complete control of the House of Representatives. Whereas Speaker Johnson's tenure is defined by one self-serving characteristic, when given a choice between advancing Republican priorities or allying with the Democrats to preserve his own personal power, Johnson regularly chooses to ally himself with Democrats. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives Gentlewoman is will here. suspend. The House will be in order. Gentlewoman's recognized. The form of the resolution is as follows. Declaring the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives to be vacant. This is the uniparty for the American people watching. So Marjorie Taylor Greene has been warning that she will try to out Mike Johnson. But to no avail because there were Democrats who were willing to stand with Mike Johnson for him to hold on to his seat. I want to say that I appreciate the show of confidence from my colleagues to defeat this misguided effort. That is certainly what it was. As I've said from the beginning and I've made clear here every day, I, I intend to do my job. I intend to do what I believe to be the right thing, which is what I was elected to do. And I'll let the chips fall where they may. Hopefully, this is the end of the personality politics and the frivolous character assassination that has defined the 118th Congress. It's regrettable. It's not who we are as Americans, and we're better than this. We need to get beyond it. We need steady hands at the wheel. We need people who understand what made America the strongest, the most powerful, the most free, the most successful, the most benevolent nation in the history of the world. We have to fight for that every day because we're in a battle between two competing visions for what America is and what it's going to be. And, and that's what I'm about every day here, and I'll continue that. We have important work, not only to keep the House majority, but to grow the majority, because that will be necessary to help save this country. And the work that we have to elect a Republican president. And we're on that as well. In this moment, the, the country desperately needs a functioning Congress. And that's what the overwhelming majority of the members in this body demonstrated today. It's regrettable. It's not who we are as Americans, and we're better than this. We need to get beyond it. We need steady hands at the wheel. We need people who understand what made America the strongest, the most powerful, the most free, the most successful, the most benevolent nation in the history of the world. We have to fight for that every day because we're in a battle between two competing visions for what America is and what it's going to be. And, and that's what I'm about every day here, and I'll continue that. We have important work. Not only to keep the House majority, but to grow the majority, because that will be necessary to help save this country. And we're on that as well. In this moment, the, the country desperately needs a functioning Congress. And that's what the overwhelming majority of the members in this body demonstrated today. Reuters, the U.S. House of Representatives on Wednesday swiftly and overwhelmingly defeated an effort by firebrand Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene to remove Speaker Mike Johnson, a fellow Republican, from his leadership role. Democrats joined Republicans in a 359 to 43 vote to protect Johnson's speakership in a bid to avoid a replay of the chaos that occurred in October when Republicans ousted his predecessor, Kevin McCarthy. Green's move represented a rare Republican defiance of presidential candidate Donald Trump, who in a social media post following the House vote on Wednesday said it was not the time for Republicans to try to push out their own speaker. Green's measure, known as a motion to vacate, showcased the disorder that has marked Republicans' slim 217 to 213 House majority, particularly since it had been clear that the effort would fail given Democrats' opposition. I appreciate the show of confidence from my colleagues to defeat this misguided effort, Johnson, 52, said following the vote. 
Hopefully this is the end of the character assassination that has characterized the current Congress. Multiple Republicans criticized Green's move, including centrist representative Mark Molinaro. This is not an individual who knows how to lead, Molinaro said of Green. She's not an individual who knows how to negotiate. And she certainly doesn't seem to have any concern for the stability of the Congress or the people we represent. Green stood flanked by fellow Republican Thomas Massey when she made her move against Johnson, criticizing him for a string of compromises with Democrats, who hold a majority in the Senate. Excuses like, this is just how you have to govern in divided government, are pathetic, weak and unacceptable, Green said of Johnson. Even with our razor-thin Republican majority we could have at least secured the border. The chamber erupted in taunts and cheers at points as Green read her resolution, with Democrats at times chanting, Hakeem, Hakeem, a reference to their party leader, Hakeem Jeffries, in an echo of the many times they voted for him as Speaker during Republicans' multiple rounds of voting for Speaker since the current House was seated in January 2021. Johnson has angered many hardliners by enacting bipartisan spending measures to avoid government shutdowns and aid U.S. allies including Ukraine, without insisting on strict security measures for the U.S.-Mexico border that Democrats reject. The House Republicans' border security bill had no chance of passing the Democratic-controlled Senate. A bipartisan compromise bill negotiated late last year and early this year in the Senate, with the Biden administration's approval, was killed by House and Senate Republicans at Trump's behest. Johnson could be seen walking around the House floor after Green began her call on Wednesday for his ouster, with Republican supporters shaking his hand and patting him on the back. Republicans have to be fighting the radical left Democrats, and all the damage they have done to our country, Trump said in his Wednesday post. We're not in a position of voting on a motion to vacate. At some point, we may very well be, but this is not the time. The situation has bolstered Jeffries, who agreed to save Johnson from ouster after freeing Congress from the roadblock of Republican infighting by delivering crucial Democratic support for must-pass bills. Green in remarks to reporters after the vote did not rule out trying to oust Johnson again. For his part, Jeffries said he hoped to see House Republicans turn against party hardliners, saying, the only thing we ask of our House Republican colleagues is for traditional Republicans to further isolate the extreme MAGA Republican wing of the GOP, which has visited nothing but chaos and dysfunction on the American people. McKinney Bryce, Thomson Reuters. McKinney Bryce has covered U.S. Congress since 2021. Aside from Washington, she has also reported in Senegal, Haiti and France. She was part of a team of journalists who detailed lawmakers' ancestors' ties to slavery. House Speaker Mike Johnson survived a motion to vacate. Here's why his job is far from safe. Washington AP, Mike Johnson's job isn't safe yet. In a stunning show of unity in the often divided House, Democrats joined a majority of Republicans on Wednesday to save the GOP Speaker from an attempt by fellow Republican Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene to remove him from his post. But while Democrats in the minority threw the Louisiana congressman a life raft by voting on his side, they made clear they might not do so again. That means the threat for Johnson still lingers as Green and other lawmakers can at any time call up another motion to oust him. The episode highlights the increasingly precarious situation for Johnson, who faces the same conservative forces that took down his predecessor, Kevin McCarthy, but with an even smaller majority that has forced him to continuously rely on Democratic support to carry out the most basic functions of legislating. Republicans control the House by the barest of margins, 217 to 213. Here's what to know about how the House can remove a Speaker and what's ahead for Johnson. What is a motion to vacate? The current rules of the House allow any lawmaker, Democrat or Republican, to put forward a resolution declaring the Speaker's chair vacant. If the House approves the resolution, it has the effect of ousting the Speaker from office. The motion to vacate has existed for most of congressional history. But it had never been deployed successfully until last October when a rebel band of Republicans joined with Democrats to oust McCarthy as Speaker. McCarthy's removal came, in part, as the result of the concessions he was forced to make to win the Speaker's gavel in the first place. Among the concessions was agreeing that a motion to vacate could be triggered by a single member, the threshold that historically has been the norm, but that had been abandoned by Democrats in the majority. Proponents of allowing a single lawmaker to file the motion said it promotes accountability, noting its long history in the House. How does it work? 
At any point, a member of the House can introduce a privileged resolution, a designation that gives it priority over other measures, to declare the office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives vacant. Once the motion is introduced, the lawmaker sponsoring it can request a vote on the House floor. Such a request forces House leaders to take action within two legislative days. But there are procedural motions that members of either party can make to slow or stop the process, and that's exactly what happened when Green called for a vote Wednesday on removing Johnson. The number. Two House Republican, Steve Scalise, immediately made a motion to table Green's resolution, which defeats it if successful. The vote to table was fast and overwhelming, with lawmakers voting 359 to 43 to defeat her effort and keep Johnson in the job. WHO is trying to oust Johnson and why? The Speaker had fought for months to navigate an increasingly fractured Republican conference, which has, in effect, been operating in the majority in name only since January 2023. Republicans unanimously chose Johnson late last year to replace McCarthy after several candidates for the job failed to gain enough support. His conservative bent was seen as a welcome departure by the most extreme members of his party who had accused McCarthy for years of being too moderate. But Green, who became a McCarthy ally late in his tenure, has been skeptical of Johnson's speakership from the beginning. While she criticized her fellow far-right colleagues for toppling McCarthy, she had warned Johnson for months that she would try to remove him in a similar fashion if he were to push ahead with a package to support Ukraine as it battles Russia's invasion. He should not bring funding for Ukraine, Green had told reporters. But Johnson did just that last month when he advanced a foreign aid package for Ukraine to the floor where it was overwhelmingly approved and signed into law. Other Republicans are also critical of Johnson, including Rep. Thomas Massey of Kentucky, who was a co-sponsor of Green's resolution to oust him. Could there be enough votes to oust Johnson? It remains to be seen, but the vote Wednesday showed Johnson's job is far from safe. Without Democratic help, Johnson could have easily been ousted. Eleven Republicans voted to proceed with Green's effort, more than the number of GOP votes it took to oust McCarthy last fall. Seven Democrats voted present and all but 32 of the others voted with Republicans to block the effort to oust him. Our decision to stop Marjorie Taylor Greene from plunging the country into further chaos is rooted in our commitment to solve problems, Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries said after the vote. Asked what they might do if there were another attempt to oust the Speaker, Jeffries said, haven't given it a thought. Some Republicans are frustrated by the threats to Johnson and were dismissive of Green. Rep. Dusty Johnson, RSD, said of those trying to remove the Speaker, they're pretty good at getting attention, but they have not been recognized for their ability to get things done. He said if they keep pushing to oust the Speaker, I think you can expect more of the same, failure. If Johnson is ousted, what would happen next? The Speaker of the House, under the rules of the chamber, is required to keep a list of individuals who can act as Speaker pro tempore in the event a chair is vacated. The list, which is oddly written by the sitting Speaker at any given time, remains with the House clerk and would be made public if the Speakership were vacant. The first person on that list would be named Speaker pro tempore and their first order of business would be to hold an election for a new Speaker. The House then would vote as many times as it took to elect a Speaker. In the case of McCarthy, the role of Speaker pro tem fell to his close confidant Rep. Patrick McHenry, RNC, the chair of the House Financial Services Committee. He was in the role for three weeks, until Johnson's election. Associated Press writers as you leave the page. Don't forget to hit the like bell and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so as yet. Thank you.